Our fifth inductee is Steve Montalvo. Steve was a member of the men's soccer and men's lacrosse teams, a three-year captain for the men's soccer team. Steve, a goalie, had 76 saves as a sophomore and as a junior recorded a 0.76 goals against average. He was a midfielder in lacrosse and was the recipient of the athletic department's Fighting Heart Award. But yeah, Steve, um, his, I would say his Hall of Fame qualities are really his leadership ability, his uh, overall character, and the example that he set for his teammates, uh, as I said before, both on and off the field. Well, Steve was, it, it's interesting, as a goalie in soccer, that's a, you know, he's a vocal leader of the soccer team, and obviously he was a great soccer player. In lacrosse, he led by example. He was not an overly vocal guy, but everybody knew he was as serious as a heart attack, and that he was going to give it everything he had. So he had really quite different styles between the two sports. Um, when, I, when I think of what embodies the true student athlete, Steve Montalvo uh, does that, and he's the kind of kid that when you're recruiting, he's really the kind of kid that you're looking for. He kind of exemplifies a student athlete. Uh, he excelled in athletics, but he did well in the classroom too, and, and he took them equally seriously. And I think he was successful in both because he treated both with the same amount of uh, dedication, commitment, uh, and, and put the time in and the effort in uh, all the time, not just some of the time. The, a model student athlete, you're really what you're looking for. Um, the kind of kid that you know is going to class and the kind of kid that sets an example, not just for his peers, but also especially for the younger guys. So when Steve kind of came of age or came into his own, uh, he was that missing component. And uh, not just that he, as I said before, did he solidify the defense, but he took charge of the defense. And when he did that, the confidence and the um, performance of the team rose. His hard work, positive attitude, um, and disciplined approach to playing the game rubbed off on his teammates. And they made them, he made them better by that example. So I think that's, that's one of the uh, many things that he contributed to the lacrosse program. He was a good bit of glue that held the team together. From the class of 2002, it is my honor to welcome Steve Montalvo into the Dick Watts Athletic Hall of Fame. Hello, thank you. Um, before I get started, there, there were two things, and I'm, I'm echoing what other people have said here tonight. But uh, first and foremost, I wanted to thank the people that helped put this evening together. So. Uh, Coach Canabine, Coach McFadden, Coach Adams, uh, Fran, they reached out to us months ago starting this. So it wasn't something that came together over the short term. And if you saw how many hours of work and how many emails went back and forth between us and them to make all this happen and how much work they put in, uh, I think a lot of that gets kind of buried in the shadows of, of this event. So I just want you to know how much we appreciate it. And, uh, and we really, really do. The, um, the other thing that I, or the other person that I want to thank tonight about making today happen is uh, my wife in the back of the room. So she, uh, I don't have a lot of opportunities like this to thank her in front of a, a, group, through, uh, a group of people, a room full of people. But uh, just like Jamie was saying, big family. This morning we had uh, three soccer games going. We had a, came out here to the football game. My daughter had a birthday party she was going to between three and five. We're coming back from that. Kids are napping. We're getting changed real quick. We're coming back out here. She has a three-month-old on her lap right now, and it's a kid's bedtime in 15 minutes. So uh, she's the glue that holds it all together, and uh, I just want to I wanna let her know how much I appreciate her support. But going back to the, um, the day when Coach Adams called me, I, I remember very specifically I was uh, at an exercise with my work, and... We're kind of in the middle of nowhere in Michigan, so there was a little bit of phone tag getting back and forth, uh, or calling back and forth trying to 
get in touch with each other. And I didn't really understand the urgency at the time, but he was really trying to get in touch with me. And so when he, when he finally called and told me that, uh, that I was getting recognized this way, I was speechless. I think he recognized that, uh, like a lot of us were. And um, as he was telling me all the stuff that's about to happen and all the, the people are going to be reaching out for different pieces of information, um, I remember starting to think, why me? And, and a lot of that was because I played with a lot of gifted people when I was here, and I wanted to make sure, or I was just thinking about what made me worthy of this over the other athletes that I played with, and I hope that once the word of this got out, which eventually it, it always does, that they were as proud as I was of, of this, this recognition. But the more I thought about it, and the more I thought about the people that I played with, I kind of I came to the conclusion that even though this is an, a very much individual recognition, it's not an individual accomplishment by any stretch. So I started thinking back about all the things that have happened in my life that kind of got me here. And uh, it starts at home, like it always does. So this is just going to be, really be a long list of thank yous to people that have helped me get to this stage today. And uh, so it starts at home. So you don't get to a point where you get to be a collegiate athlete and to do well on the field if you don't have the support in your house when you're growing up. So I wanted to thank my, my mom, my dad. They're in the back of the room. My, my stepmother's back there. Um, they supported me all through my life growing up. Um, all the crazy things that I ever did, the soccer, the lacrosse. Uh, my dad was against me going in the military. I did that anyway. Uh, so a lot of things, they supported me al along the way. And you don't get to where you are now without that support. So. Uh, I, wanna, I want them to know that I really appreciate all the support that they give me. I wouldn't be here without it. Um, my, my brothers, my younger brothers back there, my older brother, and uh, my grandfather's not here tonight. He's, he's in Puerto Rico, but uh, I wanted him to be here, and I hope this were to get back to him. But a lot of my success over my early years here were because of them. I broke my leg playing soccer my freshman year, and even with a broken leg, they were driving me to and from school every day. I played, I was, I was on the lacrosse team as a freshman, as a redshirt freshman, didn't play a single game, but my grandfather still drove me to school every day, picked me up from school every day, my brothers helped out a lot in that, and that really helps set you up for success when you can learn an entire offensive and defensive system without playing a game, and then you go into your sophomore year with a year of experience, uh, starting as a redshirt freshman. It really helps, but again, I wouldn't have been able to take advantage of that opportunity if I didn't have the support in the house that I had. So I really want to let them know that a lot of my accomplishments in college were because you guys were helping me out along the way. So thank you very much for that. Um, as I started thinking about the teams that I've played on, the, there were two kind of things that I, I was thinking about that really helped me along the way. And it was, it was a combination of coaching and then the players as well. So for the lacrosse program I played under, and you saw him in the video, Coach Chadwick, and how much they can develop you as a player, I mean, speaks a lot about how, how good of a coach they are. And so Coach Chadwick was a uh, All-American goalkeeper in lacrosse at Washington and Lee. He went on to play on the uh, or Team USA. He's in the Lacrosse Hall of Fame. So that's the kind of person, I was a defensive player in lacrosse that's teaching me defense. Of course, we're going to learn a lot from that. He's going to help develop us as a player, and then you're going to do uh, better things on the field as a result of that instruction and that coaching. So I couldn't have been that successful without him. On the soccer field, we went uh, a different direction by hiring Coach Cromwell. Coach Cromwell was a player uh, in Europe. He played in a lot of leagues in Holland. He brought a lot of the flavor of the Portuguese league into this school. And the, at the time, the, the team needed that. We needed to go a little bit of a different direction. And soccer is better in Europe, and he brought all that to us. And so as a result of his coaching, we as a team got better. His direct attention that he played to, or paid to individual players really helped us get better. And so we would not have been as successful as we were in both of those programs without phenomenal coaches, which is also a testament to the university and the direction that they were seeking to go at the time. So uh, the coaches it couldn't be here tonight, but um, if they ever get a chance to see this, I want you to know from the bottom of my heart, I wouldn't have been as successful as I was without their coaching, and uh, I really appreciate all the time and effort they put into making us better. And then um, the, the last thing I was thinking about was, again, like I said in the beginning, the players. So all the guys I played with in both teams were absolutely phenomenal athletes. And I felt uh, 
There were times I did not feel worthy to be on the same field with them. There were times I was very honored to be on the same field with them. But when you play with a, a supporting cast of players that is that successful, it makes you better uh, for two reasons. Uh, the first is because when you're on the field and you know you have all this talent around you, you don't want to be the weak link. So it makes you work harder. And then the second is just when they're that skilled, every time you're interacting with them, it, it just makes you better as a player. So without the phenomenal supporting cast I had on both teams, I don't get here. So it's as much their accomplishment as it is mine. And so I wrote down a couple names earlier that I was thinking of that I wanted them to know that I was thinking about them. And uh, for the soccer program, and th these are some of the names you'll see not only here, but also in the Hall of Fame. But I was able to play with uh, Tony Tamanini. He's, he's been inducted into the Hall of Fame. Uh, Joe Kiss, Brian Shepley, James Smirniotis. That was my, my defensive unit. B.J. Miller was probably one of the best midfielders I've ever played with. Chad Clark, one of the best stoppers and sweepers I've ever played with. That's just to name a few. These guys were phenomenal soccer players. And the fact that I was able to play with them made me a better athlete uh, and made our team more successful. And then on the lacrosse program, you can see some of the names like Nick Brownlee, phenomenal, Pat Gill, Dan Velez is getting honored tonight as a Hall of Fame uh, inductee, Matt Slater, Rob Ruff, Travis Williams, Eric Schmitz, also in the, the Hall of Fame, John Doby, phenomenal athletes in and around us. And at that time, bringing in that kind of talent is what made both of those programs successful, which is what has helped me become a better athlete and it allowed me to probably get recognized here tonight because if I didn't have that supporting cast around me, that, uh, that absolutely would not have happened. So it was absolutely about the coaches and the players and all the support that happens along the way. And then uh, finally, the last thing I kind of wanted to say is it's really to, to my kids in the back of the room. So I have five. So Ava and Kayla are back there, my two older daughters, and then uh, uh, Jackson, Braden, and Mason, they're all back there looking. And, uh, and to all the other kids in the room, when I started playing both soccer and lacrosse, I was, had a little bit of self-doubt. I never thought that I was the best athlete out there by far. But um, so if you asked me when I was young, if I ever thought I'd be playing on a high school team, the answer probably would have been no. And then if you said, you, you're going to play in college, I also would have thought no. And then to say you're going to be on two athletic teams in college, that was a, a longer shot. And then to hear that you'd be getting recognized as a Hall of Fame inductee on this evening amongst this, these group of inductees, I mean, like, you're absolutely crazy. But uh, so I want them to know that it doesn't matter, like it was always my dream to play on all these different levels. Um, to get honored here tonight is humbling and absolutely amazing beyond anything I would have ever thought. So to you guys in the back of the room, I just want you to let you, to know to dream big. It doesn't matter if it's sports or if you want to be a, a, an Olympic gymnast or if you want to be uh, a professional ballerina or even if it's a farmer and you're going to hire all your brothers and sisters to be farmhands, whatever it is, dream big because we're going to support you the same way that I had support and that everybody in this room supported us and, uh, and then you'll also have the opportunity to be up here because it's an absolutely amazing and humbling feeling and I want to thank everybody involved.